Increasing costs of living. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the ABC which is discussing the increasing cost of living, particularly in Canberra. Now Canberra, as we've seen in the past, in some ways it's a bit more resilient to recessions than other cities and, well, the ACT compared to other states or the other states and territories. Because of all the civil servants there, you know, the people that are making all the decisions about us that uh, don't have to face the harsh reality of the economy, but there are normal people living in Canberra, so the cost of living is going to start affecting people. I suspect this is where we're going to start to see a lot of the issues. Cost of living are going to creep up everywhere, bit by bit by bit. We're going to start to see it manifest. Have you seen it already? Let us know in the comments. So let's have a look. Canberra is known for its high median incomes, but the cost of living in the capital continues to climb. Emily and Kieran Lester could not believe it when they found themselves having to choose between taking out a personal loan and becoming homeless. Money is tight for the Canberra couple who decided to take out a loan on two occasions now in order to rent a home and keep a roof over their head. I mean, then that's that's really tight when you're getting into that situation where you're having to take out a personal loan to do that. I, we've been in a similar situation. For us, it's a small business. In the past, where well, you'd have a client who would pay late. You know, this is a lesson I'd learned many times before. You know, 100 grand outstanding, you got to pay your bills, you got to pay your staff, you got to pay your business rent. Oh, you know, they'll push it out, they'll push it out, paid when paid. Construction is notorious, notorious for that. Let us know if you have had a similar experience. It's one of the reasons why scaling back my business and reducing my costs has reduced my stress incredibly. It really has. The couple say the cost of living in Canberra is way too high. I mean, that's one thing, being a business and having people do the dodge on paying your invoices. Be another being an employee and being in, uh, not even able to scrape by. We're not in the public service. There you go. That's it. You, well, that's your problem there, guys. You, you, why are you in Canberra then? If you're not in the public service. So we're not on extremely high wages, Emily said. If I didn't have my husband to help support wages, we'd be able to afford we wouldn't be able to afford to live in Canberra at all well that's that's the issue guys it's now you just need to you need to be in a couple just to buy a house or you probably even need to be in a couple just to rent a house in Canberra Emily works as a receptionist and her hub, husband Kieran is a manager in the retail industry the cost of living for your rent food and electricity it all adds up really quickly Emily said rent chews up a large portion of the pair's combined income of about $75,000. We're not low income, but we're not high income, Emily said. Um, 37000 each. Yeah, you're both low income. You're both low income. We're in that bracket where we're somehow supposed to survive. So here's the average total weekly full-time earnings in the ACT is 1800 bucks. Queensland, we're 1600 WA is the highest. To you miners out there in WA, guys, that's why your housing's so expensive. Australia, the average is 1720. Tassie's the cheapest, which kind of sucks for the houses, housing costs in Hobart, doesn't it? The couple are now on the hunt for a new rental home after being told they have to leave their current one in Belconnen. But it's a tight market. Emily and, and Kieran have been to more than 40 inspections in the past fortnight. And to say the pair were getting sick of going to open homes was an understatement. Well, this is one of the reasons why people want to own their own home. So you don't have to go through this pain, through looking at one place or another or another. And it must be tough if they're going through all these open home inspections and you're hearing how better things are in other states. Well, maybe they need to leave Canberra. Maybe they need to leave, go to another city, create a new life for yourself. Find better opportunities. I know, but but Florian, they've got family and, and they're connected to Canberra. So, guys, this is this is adulthood. Sometimes you have to move to where the jobs are. You have to move away from the city where you're going to have overly overinflated competitors in the private in the public sector that have an unfair advantage. 
Every house looks almost the same now, she said. Or he said. The couple said they're not picky. They just want a home with a working air conditioner and a backyard for their pets. That that seems picky. That's a bit of a luxury. Well then, yeah, I mean, my standards have been pretty low, guys. I've, I've lived most of my life without an air conditioner. And I grew up in Victoria. We didn't have one there. And it got very hot, very hot in Coldstream. Oh, well, no, actually, no, sorry. No, we did. My parents just never turned it on. We make sure that the money for our rent is covered before we eat, Emily said. Okay. If it comes to a roof over our head or eating, it will always be a roof over our heads. Well, you just need to go OMAD. You need to go OMAD, change your diet. Fast for a week, then you get some money saved up. So how Canberra compares to other cities? Median weekly rent in Canberra is $361, similar to Melbourne, slightly higher than in Brisbane but lower than in Sydney, according to the Australian National University. Rents in Canberra, like most capital cities, are relatively high. Associate Professor Ben Phillips, who heads up a social and economic modelling team at the ANU, said. According to Australian Bureau of Statistics data, Canberra's population is relatively young, with low unemployment and higher than, ab than national average incomes. I'm sure there are some ACT households that have cost of living issues, but by and large, they've got, to, they've got much higher incomes than the rest of the country. And in terms of our cost of living pressure, they haven't changed much in the last 10 years, Mr. Phillips said. But of course, if you're low income, the relatively high rents in Canberra will certainly be an issue. So go the cha change in rental prices over the 10 years. So Hobart, Sydney and Melbourne are up. Everyone else has gone down. And we'll have to see what happens in the next few years. We're seeing more and more, we looked at a previous video, where rents in Sydney are going down. Rents in Melbourne are going down. Rents in Brisbane are going down. While much of Mr. Phillips' research pours cold water on the so-called Canberra tax, the idea that Canberrarians pay more for most things just because they live in the national capital, it does identify pockets of stress. Electricity prices have seen a sharp increase over the past five years, up 25% compared to a national average of 15%. Petrol price rises have been marginally higher than other regions, up 16% over the past 10 years compared to 14% elsewhere. Compared to the rest of the nation, overall taxes have increased substantially, up 80% since 11-12 compared to 53% elsewhere. Well, you know, that's the privilege for being in the Canberra. So households in housing stress. So it's more than your, where your housing costs are more than 30% of your income. New South Wales is 18, Queensland is 18, Australia is the average is 17, where ACT is only at 13%. NT is at the lowest. I wonder, is that because a significant proportion of the Northern Territory is in government housing? The high household and commercial rates are the headline figures. It's certainly true to say that rates have increased sharply in the ACT in the last 10 years, Mr. Phillips said. I'd say they're roughly double. They've they've roughly doubled in the last nine to ten years, and that's more so than any other capital city around the country. However, Mr. Phillips points out that stamp duty has basically flatlined over the same period. Certainly, rates is a large upfront cost for ACT households, but you need to take into account that there's a range of other taxes and charges and income sources for the government. Mr. Phillips explained. Roughly speaking, Canberra households get goods and services worth about 25000 per year from the ACT government. Rates on average are about a tenth of that, around 2500 So New South Wales are cheaper and more appealing for families. While the figures may show Canberra is well off, is a well-off community, plenty are still struggling to make ends meet and are choosing to cross the border to get ahead. Public servant Deanna Smith, her husband Bill and two sons, uh, Ewan, eight, and Dylan, six, did just that. We didn't grow up in Canberra, but we've been in Canberra long enough that we feel like we're Canberrians. And if anyone asks where I'm from, I say Canberra, she says. But about five years ago, the Smiths sold their house in Canberra south and bought a slice of land in uh, Goonong, just across the border in New South Wales. There's an affordability factor, which we found ruled us out of a lot of the areas that we quite like, she said, referencing Canberra's newer, smaller blocks with bigger price tags. We've reached a point in our lives where we just want to enjoy our lives as they are, and so we thought we can do that in Gunong. 
let us know guys if you're there is it a, is it a good area you know over the border they indeed found the lifestyle they craved with cash to spare they crunched the numbers and found significant cost savings their mortgage is cheaper so too car registration and insurance household rates and bills it was something horrendous she said it was like over three thousand dollars for our first winter gas bill for our house and camera and when you compare that to the 170 dollars or whatever it costs us now for our gas here it's just i'll never forget that look at that difference look at that difference while leaving canberra was a big decision miss smith and her family have no regrets on sunday afternoon we might open a bottle of wine and get some cheese and crackers we sit out in our backyard and we have these beautiful views of the mountains and it's peaceful and the kids play it's the life we envisaged in the future and we're able to get it whereas i think if we'd stayed in canberra well they probably wouldn't get it so there you go guys there you go two lo two examples of what's happening in canberra is this just the canberra cax is it just the sign the cost of living are going up or are we comparing one couple that's smart enough to get out and another who were yet to realize maybe time to get out of canberra or the act do you live in canberra how do you find the cost of living there let us know in the comments everyone please like share and subscribe to the channel if you're a fan and want to support us there are a few ways you can you can interact with the channel. It's a great way to let YouTube know you're enjoying the content. It helps the channel grow. You can support us via using any of our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. Buy our merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint. Or support us via PayPal. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.